Hey, it's Rich Norton here. Welcome to RMS Sales Training and Inspiration. Delighted to be with you. Very excited to be with you. We're doing a little short series here, a little bit about cold calling. The last show that I talked about, we were kind of reviewing about uh, embracing failure. We were talking about embracing rejection because many people, as we talked about in the previous show, they put a halt to their success. In other words, they have failed without even starting. And I hear this and I see this all the time because here's my philosophy. When I'm talking about cold calling, I'm not talking about on the phone. That's fine. You know, if you want rejection, you get on the phone, you're going to get all kinds of rejection. To me, that's harder than going out and cold calling. So when I'm talking about cold calling in our business, I'm talking about driving out to the area, getting in your car, go visiting the area, go out and talking to merchants, that's cold calling. Stopping in on a business for the very first time for someone that's never met you. Now when you think about that, that can be very, very, very scary, right? It's almost like if you said, hey, I want you to, to give a speech to 100 people tomorrow morning automatically people would be like, oh, no, no way. You know, the majority of the people, that would just, they'd start getting all hives and nervous just by that. And a lot of that is with cold calling, too, because they've never done it, and they have that fear of rejection. And how do you overcome that? The only way to overcome it is just to do it, you know, and you will get rejection. So that's where people get so caught up in that. It's like, you know, I, I don't want to get out there because I'm going to get I'm, I'm afraid of rejection. Well, just kind of change your thinking there. Instead of being afraid of rejection, why don't you just embrace that rejection? They're like, what are you talking about? When you embrace the react, rejection and you look at it that this is all part of the process and it's part of the learning process and it's all part of me having success, then you begin to understand that it's not a big deal. And I hope that's resonating with you because people get so caught up in that. And on the previous show, we talked about that the hardest doors to overcome when it comes to cold calling is the front door. And unfortunately, we have many representatives that talk about success they talk about going out and making it happen. They talk about doing all these wonderful things, and then they stay at home because they haven't overcome that first door, and that's that front door. It's like your whole philosophy is, I'm going to be a cold caller. You open that door at 7 o'clock in the morning. That's your first door that you overcame. And you say, goodbye, family. If you got a family, I'm going out there to make it happen for you for all of you because you as my family who I love deserves a wonderful life. That's your first step. You overcame that first door. You know exactly where you're going. You're driving out to the area, whether it's half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever it may be, you're getting yourself mentally prepared for going out and talking to merchants. That's exactly what you're doing. And now, when you get out to your destination, because you've practiced, you've rehearsed, you've gone over the opener, that's what you should be doing. Looking in the mirror, hi, my name's Rich. Hi, I'm out here helping merchants in the area. Just do that. Practice that a couple times. Hey, my name's Rich, whatever your name is. Hi, my name's so-and-so. I go, go, practice that. I've been helping a bunch of merchants in the area. Just do that, you know, go through that part right there. And then do the next line, and then rehearse it, and rehearse it, and go over it. And by the time you get out there in the field, however long you drove, however long it took you to get there, you should be out in the field by 8.30. Like for example, today I got to my area at 8 o'clock, a little bit after 8 o'clock. Start looking for the businesses that are open right now. And are there businesses open at 8 o'clock? Yes, there are. There are open at 7, some at 6 o'clock. Go out and find them. Look for the auto repair, the body shops, the different businesses that are open. Some of them get in early to set things up. If you're going to a restaurant, get them early, you know, before they start their day. 
great time. And it's wonderful to write a merchant at 8 o'clock, 8.30 in the morning. What a great way to start the day. So I say all that by saying you're driving out to the area, you're mentally prepared, you overcame door number one, now your next step is to overcome door number two. What is door number two? That's your car door. Sometimes that's the most hardest door to overcome is that car door because it's nice and safe in that car. You're driving around, it's like, oh yeah, look at all these businesses. Oh yeah, they look busy. I don't know how to talk to them. Oh, I never do, I don't do good with that type of business. Now you're a profit, right? You're driving out to the area. Oh, it's kind of raining out right now, and it's, oh, I hear the storms out right now. Oh, I don't know if I should get out there right now. Oh, I don't want to bother people. Looks like there's too many customers in there. Then at the end of the day, it's, hey, I just had a bad time and couldn't get anybody together. The problem is you didn't get out of the car. Let's be real. Let's be honest. So it's time to overcome that second door, and that's the car door, right here. That nice car, you're sitting in your chair, nice and comfortable. Now it's time to pull up to the business at 8.30. You pull into that business, your heart's pumping, you're ready to go, you're fired up. You pull in, and you open up that car door, right? And you walk into that business, and you're ready to give your awesome opener. Just like we talked about in the last show. You're giving every merchant that you meet your absolute best, your very, very best. As we always say, every merchant that you meet deserves your very best. And you walk in and you give them the biggest smile that you could ever give. And you let them know that you love what you're doing just by the way you approach that merchant. You let them know that you love helping people just by the conviction in your voice, by the sincerity in your voice, because you're genuine, you're happy, you love what you're doing, and when you meet that pe person for the very first time, you are making that impression. And guess what? They may give you rejection. I'm not interested, we're happy with what we got. I give them one objection. That's fine. That's what everybody tells me. Everybody tells me they're happy with what they got. Once they find out what our program is dealing with a direct processor, we convert them all to us. By the way, who are you using? We're using our, our bank. Okay. Everybody that has that, you know, I've converted over to our program right there. Everybody. They found out the bank doesn't do the processing. They farm it out to a third party, and in many cases, they're paying doubles. As a matter of fact, the last guy I just helped out, he was paying double, and we converted him to our program. Overcome the objection. If they still don't respond, guess what I'm doing? I'm moving on to the next one. Not a big deal. Why? Because I'm embracing the rejection. We're not interested. Thank you very much. You saved me some time. Let me go on and talk to the next merchant. Oh, okay, right? Go on, get the same thing. Great opener, lots of enthusiasm, very excited about what I'm doing, very happy about what I'm doing. Give them a great opener. If they give me rejection, thank you for your time. You saved me a bunch of time. Moving on to the next one. And then eventually, what ends up happening, because you're excited about what you're doing, you're sincere, and you're genuine, and you believe in what you're doing, eventually, I promise you, please believe me, there's someone out there that wants your help. Follow the process. It's all part of the process. It's all part of going out and talking to people. If you follow the system, you're going to have success. So that's what we're going to cover a little bit more today. Uh, we'll just did a little review here. We'll do a little bit more of a review, and then I'll cover some other things that will help you with your cold calling, and you're going to have great success because you're following the process, the process that definitely does work. Are you excited? I am ready to make it happen. Let's take a short break. I'll be right back, and we'll dive right into it. Hey everybody, you have Rich Norton here from Retriever Merchant Solutions. Do you consider yourself a winner? Do you consider yourself a champion? Do you consider yourself the best? Are you that type of person that likes to strive for the best? You like being number one, you're competitive, you like being in a positive environment where you can go as far as you want to go? 
Well, that's what we have at Retriever Merchant Solutions, an opportunity where you can be big as you want to be. You can grow as high as you want to go. You can go as far as you want to go. That's the opportunity that we have here with RMS. So if you feel that you're that type of person, you like meeting people, you're not afraid of rejection, you understand that the key to success is having a right attitude and going to work and never looking back and never giving up and making a commitment to do this 1000%, that's going to give you success. So if I just describe you, I want you to give me a call. Rich Norton, 904-434-4635. You're going to see the email right at the bottom of the screen. We will teach you this business. You may say, well, I've never done that type of business. We will teach you. We will train you. We will give you all the necessary tools on what it takes to become successful. And then we can celebrate your success and congratulate you for being a winner with RMS. I look forward to that. Give me a call. All right, grateful to be back with you. This is good stuff, and I hope this is helping you and making sense because here's the bottom line. It's all about right here. You know, it's all about making that decision. I'm not going to let any rejection get in my way. I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm just going to go out and follow the system, just like Rich Norton says. If he can do it, I can do it. All I got to do is make the calls, have fun, enjoy myself, and just go to work every day. Like we say, the hardest doors, let's overcome that front door Monday through Friday. Let's overcome that car door, and let's go out and make it happen. Let's do this. Let's do this together. As we talked about, as I said earlier, you're leaving, whether you have a family or whatever the situation may be, you have a future, you're leaving that. You're saying to your family and your future, we are going to have great success. That's why I'm going out and hitting the field every day, because I am going to achieve my goals and my dreams, and I understand that it's going to require a lot of effort, it's going to require a lot of attitude, and I have to go out and make it happen. So we talked about embracing rejection. We've talked about focusing on immediate learning, uh, not worrying about I have to make a sale, you know, understand we're going to grow every, every day. But another thing I want to talk about when we're out there cold calling and we're meeting people for the very first time is we have to understand that we need to stop wasting time. Time is our capital invested with the right people. Now also talking about we don't need to waste merchants time either and we certainly don't need to waste our own time. So remember every second of your time counts. Very important that you understand that. When I'm out in the field, every second matters to me. I don't do executive lunches. I carry my lunch out there with me. I'm making every second count. I'm not out there being a professional visitor, wasting time with the wrong people. I'm on a mission. My mission is to find the merchants that want my help. They want to meet me, they know I'm genuine, they know I'm sincere, and they know that I'm helping them. That's the key, and it's important to understand that. But along with not wasting your time, let's not waste the merchant's time either. Now you say, Rich, what are you talking about? You say your time's more valuable than that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying every now and then, which you should be doing all the time, you have to put yourself in a merchant's position. Think about that. You're a merchant, somebody comes into your business. Now you have had several other people come into your business before. You get people calling you up all the time on the phone trying to get your statement, right? You're kind of sick of it. You're kind of tired of it, right? One guy, the last guy that was in, was in for an hour and a half and he just completely wasted your time. Here's where some of the merchants may be. Some may not be that drastic, some may be in different scenarios, but they've heard a lot of it before. So what you want to do as a representative, you want to dare to be different. You don't want to waste people's time and you don't want to waste your time. So get in, make your point, and get out. 
Bottom line, simple as that. We don't need to have a four-hour presentation and bore the people to death and completely talk them out of it. I have literally written merchants up in five minutes. Simple as that. It took me long, longer to do the paperwork or writing at the app out than it did presenting them. Because this is called how to know when you made your point and when it's time to shut up. Simple as that. How to know when you made your point and when it's time to stop talking. So get in, make your point, and get out. Because the merchant wants to know, are you legitimate? Bottom line. Are you real? Are you genuine? Are you trustworthy? Can they count on you? That's what they want to find out. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I was with a merchant today, and uh, when I walked in, immediately met her for the very first time, you know, and she goes, you know what, I don't have a lot of time. Can you just kind of get to the point to what you're doing? And I, I appreciated that because most representatives would have went through their long, drawn-out presentation. And I knew all she wanted to hear was well, what was the bottom line, right? She was interested. But what is the bottom line? So we need to listen to these merchants and get right to the point. And I, and I said, man, I'm so thankful that you're that way because I'm that way also. I've been doing this for a long time. I keep it real simple. I get everything right to the bottom line. I had a guy that told me earlier, you got 10 minutes. I said, I only need two. What are we going to do with the other eight? And she laughed at that. So broke the ice, went right to it, wrote her up explained it in about three to five minutes at the very most. And when I got down to the end, she's like, okay, that sounds good. What do you need from me? Now, many representatives would have been long, drawn-out presentation about this and that and about the intergalactical interchange and all this other stuff and this and that, and it would have been, you're wasting my time. I don't care about that. All I want to know is this is what I paid. Here's what she did. Didn't show me a statement, right? I asked her, what do you got, what do you think you do a month in processing? She went and got her bank statement out. This is what I did, this is what they charged me. Okay, wow, wow. You know, I got dramatic with her. And she goes, Yeah, I know, I'm paying way too much. So I explained real quickly how it worked, got to our program, here's a statement of a merchant that's similar. Wow, that's half of what we're doing. Here's the equipment, here's how that works. What do I need to do to get started? That's simple as that. So don't waste merchants' time, certainly don't waste your time. So when you're out there in the field, don't be a professional visitor. You know, people are like, I'm out there and I'm meeting so many nice people and it's great, I love meeting friends and I met this really nice person, I spent about a half hour and we got to talking about the weather and about where they were from. You know, all that's nice, small talk is nice, but we're there to get business. You know, we're there to write merchants. We don't want to be professional visitors. So don't do that. Please understand that your time is very valuable. Time is your capital. Invest it with the right people. Don't waste their time. I hope that resonates with you, what I'm talking about. Put yourself in their position and don't waste your time either. So also, when we give you our presentation, for example, I gave you guys all an opener for cold calling. I gave you what we call a script for cold calling. Now, it's amazing how I will do that. I will give a script to people, and then a three days later, I'm like, let me hear your opener. And they're like, da -da 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 -da, and they're taught. I'm like, where the heck did you get that? That sounds nothing like anything that I taught you. Well, I kind of changed it up a little bit. How's it working for you? Uh, not very good. Let's go back to the script, all right? So learn the script and fit it with your personality. I had that written down. Follow your scripts like an actor, but don't sound like a robot, okay? So you should write that down. Follow your script like an actor, but don't sound like a robot. So if I give you an opener, I'm giving you the opener that I'm using. Why do I give you that opener? Because I'm thinking, well, you know, you ought to try this, it might work for you. I give you that opener because that's what I do. 
and that's what I do, and guess what? It works. It definitely does work. You have to take that opener and you have to fit it with your personality. So what you want to do is, if you have trouble learning, whatever it might be, record it, listen to it over and over and over again. Now, some of you might say, well, I don't really have a good memory, I just can't get it down. Well, think about music, for example. There are songs that you may have grown up with, and you heard them over and over and over again. You played the records, you played them and you played them, here it is, years later, that song comes on and you're singing the whole song. You memorized the whole song, and it's in your brain right now. Why is that? Because you heard it once and it's just there? No, because you heard it over and over and over again, and years later, it's amazing, years later, it's still in your brain right now. And it's the same thing with our opener. You should listen to it, record it, and listen to it over and over again like a song. Even if you have to sing it, if it helps you to sing it and put it into a little melody and that might help you to remember it, that's fine. Do that. Do whatever it takes to make sure you're learning that script. And then once you've got that script, what you want to do is make sure you're not sounding like a robot, you're on doing a performance is what you're doing. You always wanted to be an actor, you always wanted to be an actress, here's your time. And I'm telling you, the best performance that you do, the greatest performance, the better you do, the more response you're going to get from the merchant, just like in acting. The better acting that you do, the better response you're going to get from your audience, which means more money. And it's the same thing in our business. The best, the better you do it, the best you do it, the most wonderful you do it, the best response you're going to get from your merchants. Which means, guess what? More money for you. Simple as that, right? Why can people in our business go out and write 10 merchants in a week with the same script that somebody else has? It's all about their attitude. It's all about going out and making it happen. It's all about putting on that performance. So I want you to take that opener and forget about the rejection. We talked about that before. Embrace it. But I want you to do it and just practice it and rehearse it. Hey, my name's Rich. I'm out here helping merchants in the area. Hey, my name's Rich. Nice to meet you guys. Hey, and just practice that part of it. Just take the first part of that opener and just rehearse that. You should be doing that on the way out to the field. You should look in the mirror and say, hey, my name's Rich. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, happy Monday to you guys. Or happy Tuesday to you all. Whatever the day may be, and just practice that and go over that. Get the first part of that down. Once you've done that, go on to the next sentence and rehearse that. Record it. How does it sound? Do I sound like a robot? Now, when I'm talking about a robot, hi, my name's Rich, I'm from RMS, WorldPay, we are out here helping merchants in the air. Not like that. Put on a performance. Practice and rehearse. Hey, my name's Rich, I've been helping a bunch of merchants in the area. Just that part. Do that. Walk into a business and do that. Hey, my name's Rich, nice meeting you guys, happy Monday to you. Is that the guard dog right there? Whatever you see, look for something in the business that you can kind of get them talking a little bit, get them laughing. By the way, I've been helping a bunch of merchants in the area. I am the regional director. See how I do that? I pause a little bit and I enunciate the words. You can take the same thing. Hi, my name's Rich. I'm out here helping merchants in the area. I'm the regional director. Or, hey, my name's Rich. Nice meeting you guys. Happy Monday. I've been helping a bunch of merchants right in the area today. I'm the regional director. Same words, does it sound like a big difference? No question about it. Because what better response am I going to get? Am I going to get, hi, my name's Rich, I'm helping merchants in the area. They're going to say, well, yeah, we're, yeah, we're kind of busy right now. But if I'm excited and I'm enunciating the words and I'm giving a very good impression, then 
That's what makes a difference. Hey, my name's Rich. I've been helping a bunch of merchants in the area. I'm the regional director. Just that part right there. You should practice that and get that down. I actually work with RMS and I work in the payment processing department and we we have a couple new programs that's keeping us crazy busy and it's allowing merchants to save anywhere from like 20 all the way up to 90 percent if not more on their processing so my job is super easy being able to help merchants in the area so I've conveyed a nice little message right there as opposed to what I talked about earlier get the script down right don't just put map or throw a couple things together and make it completely different from the script because it's not working get the script down and get it down where you can just walk into anybody and man, man I got this down I am so confident I've got this down I can walk in and talk to everybody why because I have the most awesome script when I walk into the business it works how do we know it works? Because it's been proven and it will be proven. So that first impression when you walk into the business. I had a great compliment from somebody today and when I walked in they're like, you know there's something different about you, really nice guy. He goes, and I didn't write them, I'm going to be going back to them. He didn't handle it but his wife does. Walked in and he goes, you, there's something different about you. You've got like a glow, like a light. I like that. I'm I'm looking forward to you coming back, but I don't handle that. You've got to talk to my wife. I'm like, what a great compliment that is, right? I mean, uh, i got a glow. That means I'm enthusiastic. I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving what I'm doing. So that's what you want to do. Have that glow when you walk in. Have that spirit when you walk in. Be enthusiastic. Again, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Very, very important. You walk in, rehearse that. Hey, my name's Rich. I've been helping a bunch of businesses right in the area here. Just that in itself. You see the body language that I'm doing? Bunch of businesses right in the area. I walk in, I don't carry anything in. The only thing I want them meeting is me. That's it. Right? I'll bring my book in later once I've established that I'm going to present them or I'm going to set up an appointment, whatever the scenario may be. I've been helping a bunch of businesses in the area. I'm the regional director working with RMS. I'm local. I work right here. I've been assigned to this area right here, helping a bunch of merchants. There's a, I work in the payment processing department, and they put together a couple new programs. Some are up to like 95% in savings. So as you can imagine, we're keeping really, really busy helping these merchants out. And there you go, simple as that. And then you kind of lean into some of the merchants that we're helping out, have this program, some have that program, throw some out there. By the way, who are you guys using? Oh, we got such and such. Well, I, okay, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Most of the businesses we've been helping have that same exact program right there, shaking my head up and down. And we've been able to help all those merchants. So you're conveying that you're establishing a rapport and you're selling yourself. Now the time goes by real quick. I get excited as I'm talking about this, but I'm going to take a short break and we're going to finish this up about cold calling and I know this is making sense and this is going to take you to that next level. I'm excited for you, excited for your future. Let's take a short break and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Rich Norton and I want to say to all of you that I am extremely, extremely blessed and very grateful and very thankful for all the blessings that God has bestowed upon me. And I don't take that for granted at, at all. I'm really, really thankful and I know that I am blessed to be a blessing. So I say all that, that we are going to be beginning a new show that I'm super pumped up, super excited about. And the name of that show is called Blessed to Be a Blessing. Because when we receive God's blessings, we don't just keep it to ourselves. It's important that we bless other people. That's the expectation, and that's where our heart should be, and that's where my heart is at. So we have been talking about this, my wife and I, and this was laid upon my heart, that we are going to start going out to different ministries across the southeast, and who knows, we can start doing it all throughout the country, and we're going to do a show 
and it's called Blessed to Be a Blessing. And on the show, we are going to meet some of the people that are there. We're going to meet the owners, uh, these people that have great hearts, and they're behind the scenes, and they're on a, struggling on a budget, and they're having a tough time, and, uh, but their hearts are in the right place, and they're loving people, and they're serving people, serving the least of these. And then we're just going to highlight these shows and these people that are on the show, and we'll meet some of the people that they're helping. And I'm real excited about doing this. And here's the cool thing. At the end of the show, they're not going to know this, but at the end of the show, we're going to come back probably the next day after we recorded that show, and we're going to bless them with a blessing. So we're going to kind of make it a little secret, go in and let them know that we just want to highlight your ministry, get it out there so people can hear about it, see what you do. Maybe other people will give to the ministry, but we're going to come back in. And this is me and my family doing this because we've been blessed in an amazing way and we're going to give donations, some big donations that I'm excited about being able to do and I'm excited and i got so much joy that we're going to be able to do this to help people because there's no greater joy than giving. So that'll be the big surprise at the end of the show and we're really excited about it and we're really grateful and very thankful to be able to do that. So. Blessed to be a blessing. Stay tuned for some of these episodes coming up, and you will see them very shortly on American Hearts Radio. Blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Okay, so we are back. I hope this all makes sense to you, so keep that in mind throughout these two episodes that we talked about that embrace that resistance focus on learning you know don't go out and try to talk people into anything don't waste the merchants time don't waste your time follow the scripts learn them get them down you may say I'm not connecting with people I walk into businesses and I'm fumbling all over the place I don't know what I'm talking about Get that down. You know, your goal, you know, I mean, once you have this part down, everything flows after that. Your goal is to be able to walk into the business with the utmost confidence, knowing exactly what you're saying. You're not using filler words. You're not going, um, and ah, and you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean, and all that. You're getting rid of all that junk. You're looking the people right in their eyes. You have strong eye contact. I love it when the merchants look me right in their eyes, in my eyes, because it's important that they are seeing that I am staring right back at them, and the eyes are the mirror to their soul. So I want them to see that I have conviction, I believe in what I'm doing, I'm not going to be shifty-eyed, I'm not looking all over the place, and you know, because once you're doing that, please understand you're losing the merchant because you're letting the merchant know I don't have confidence in what I'm doing they may even think that this guy's or this person's a little bit shady because they're not really looking at me in my eyes so get that part down that eye contact don't be shifty eyed show the merchant that you're trustworthy you're confident and you truly believe in what you're doing practice practice get it down stick to the script fit it with your personality I've got everything there for you you know think about this like for example those of you that have been through our one-on-one -on -one training programs we have them all recorded for you right now it's a 20 part series where I take you from the beginning to the end what you can do is you can review it now you can get right on rmssupercrew.com. You can put the password in for training materials. And right along with all the training materials, there's 27 pages, I believe, you can watch all the videos from beginning to end and get all that down. And once you have that down, that's going to help you to have success. So it's there for you. I put these there for you because I have so much desire, so much excitement for you to achieve great levels in the business. 
I'm amazed that half the people probably don't watch it, and then they're sitting at home wondering why they're not having success. It's there for you. Take advantage of it, get excited about it, and let's make a commitment. So practice, 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 let's do it. Embrace that resistance, embrace the rejection, embrace the failure. Remember, overcome that front door, that car door. Let's go out and make it happen. Practice, 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 and remember, today's an awesome day. It's a gift from God. What are you going to do with this day? Make sure you make it a wonderful gift back to God. I'll see you next time on RMS Sales Training and Inspiration.